Hi, folks. Steve Urban here, founder and CEO at RiderFlex. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. And as a reminder, please subscribe to the RiderFlex show for updates on new episodes. And by the way, if you haven't already, check out the book we recently launched, The RiderFlex Guide, Inspiring and Hiring, available for purchase on Amazon. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. Try the number one marketing platform for small business. Everything you need from design to marketing to CRM. Learn more at marketing360.com. Marketing 360. Fuel your brand. Wow. Brothers, your sister or brothers? This is my brother's son. Yeah, my brother. Uh, Oh, so you and your brother both had boys at the same time then, roughly? My brother went back to the well. I mean, my brother's got four kids and they're all, the three are teenagers. Oh. And then my wife and I have been married for 15 years. She's the rock. Oh. And um, we just have had fun. We have a, a great relationship and, you know, we, people are like, well, are you having kids? And we are like, yeah, probably, you know, which is kind of how <laughs> we roll as a family. We're just like, yeah, nothing too serious. Um, I'm more of the serious one, of course. And, uh, Finally, we decided to after, you know, being married for 15 years and together for about 18. And my brother's like, well, all my kids are too old. (laughs) (laughs) And he's Uh, he's remarried. And so he and his uh, wife have three kids between them, but they've never had one together. So perfect timing. And uh, so they went back to the well for us. And now we have we got two little guys that uh, my son's called crew and his son is Nash. So we call him Crash and they very much embody (laughs) that. I like yeah. that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, uh, well, shoot, we're rolling already into your in, into your life a little bit, so we'll just keep going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep going, and uh, I'll, I'll stop you at the end. We'll do a little small talk about uh, follow up and everything, but let's just keep going because sure. we're already we're already into it. So, so yeah. um, you're married with one child then, uh, uh, and your yeah. wife. What what is she doing? How'd you meet her? <laughs> uh, met through a mutual friend. Uh, you know, the college days, uh, she was here in Denver doing some, a summer job, um, in between school and in between, uh, going into, uh, dental hygiene school. And, uh, one of my great friends had moved out from Wisconsin. I'm originally from Madison, Wisconsin. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but, uh, um, she had just moved here, my friend that is, and I got this phone call. She's like, Hey, I I just met this really nice girl and I need a friend here. I'm going to bring her to you know, a little happy hour, um, tonight after we, I take her to dinner and get to get to meet her and stuff. And that's about as good as she got to meet her. (laughs) She brought her to, brought her to our happy hour and I met her and I thought I got the plug in. I didn't, um, I never would have had the, the, uh, courage, uh, to approach her the way I did. And I'm thankful every day for my friend Kelly and for me and my wife, Jessica. So that's how we met. Um, yeah, she's in, She's in dental hygiene and, um, you know, rocking, you know, there, she, I don't know how she does it. She's like nine to 10 patients a day and very yeah, busy industry. Right. You know, you know, isn't that so true? It's interesting. You bring that up. I, last time I went to the dentist and I usually have the same hygienist there. I, I should remember her name. I, I feel embarrassed that I don't remember because I see her all the time. And I, and I always think to myself, man, don't you get tired of looking at people's mouths all day? Like, does that get old? Like, does that, does that, does that get old? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would think so. And it's a question that I ask often for you, Steve. I, I, I'm like, you know, cause I ask her every day. And the one thing I, I don't, I do a lot of things wrong. I, and I, I do. And, but in marriage, I do try to make sure because I know her days are long and oh, just yeah. be like, how is your day? But yeah. not to be like, how is your day? And you get the same over the head. Like I look her in the eyes. How is your day? How is your day? And, and, yeah. and, you know, she's been in this for 12 plus years. And, wow. and so she, she will answer now more honestly than she used to. She's always <laughs> positive. She's a very positive person. Very positive. And, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And her day is dictated largely by who she sees. Right. Like, I believe and it. Probably. Yeah. Right. And how who she interacts with. And yes. the interesting dichotomy of that, 
you know, that relationship, that communication line is that she can ask all the questions, but you can't answer anything. She's just in her mouth. <laughs> like that. Yeah, no. So she can, she can quiet uh, him down a little bit if she needs to. She just gets back in there, you know? <laughs> oh, oh there. man, that's so good. You can tell her I said this too. One more thing, not to, not to, not to get too uh, graphic for the listeners, but one thing I do yeah. is when I'm going to the dentist and I'm 55, so I got to clean myself up, so to speak, a little bit. So I always, I always think to myself, okay, all right, so let me trim my nose hairs. Let me make sure my breath smells halfway decent when I walk in. I try to like refresh, like like just all the things I know that might get on the hygienist's nerves, right? I try to like, yeah. like okay, I don't want to be one of those guys. It's just all nasty. Mm. It smells and everything. So I, I try to go in there going, man, all right, I know this is tough. So let me just clean myself up as best I can before I sit down. So you can tell her I said that. <laughs> That's She would appreciate that. And you are the 1%. Because <laughs> you, you uh, believe the stories that, oh, you know, man. Yeah. coming in from driving a cigarette down the parking lot, walking up to uh, yes. get your teeth cleaned is uh, pretty – uh, I can't even think about that at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so and where is she from originally? She's she's uh, she's a local to Colorado. Oh, she, she Well, to Colorado. Okay. She's from uh, Canyon right. City originally. Oh, okay. Uh, we're in All Denver right. now. Um, All right. All right. Been here since we met. That's great. And your folks then, uh, are they still in Wisconsin or where, where your parents or where I, did you go to high school there or just college and talk to me about yeah. your parents a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, background is pretty formidable for a conversation like this. Anyways, I, I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I was okay. born in Portage, Wisconsin, a smaller town outside of Madison, moved to Madison at a young age. My parents separated. Um, mm -hmm. and my mom and my stepfather were in Madison. That's where all the schools were. That's where mm -hmm. I went. My father, um, moved back to where my mom, my, my mom and my dad originally met in a small town called Cassville, Wisconsin, put that on the map. Okay. Uh, Grant County, Southwest corner of Wisconsin, where we have some good old hunting land there and, uh, um, right. where I go back every year to hunt and cool. spend an amazing time with my dad. So, um, that's great. I always, I always tell people it's, um, you know, there's a story, there's always a narrative when your parents separate. And I think that happens to a lot of us out there mm -hmm. and it's always different. No one's situation is the same. Um, but my parents both became better people in their, in their separate marriages. Um, good, good. for the most part, my, yeah, my mom is recently, well, three years separated from my stepdad now. And uh -oh. my mom lives five minutes from my house. And okay. It's amazing. Right. Um, and everyone's amazing. Um, but, uh, that helps with the two year old. She, does she help with the two year old then? Yeah. There you beyond, go. Awesome. beyond, beyond. Yeah, I don't know if it's possible cool. without her. So, uh, that's very helpful yeah. to have your mom uh, that close with a two-year-old, no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, and that's great that you have a relationship with your real dad too. Um, close relationship. Does he ever come out? Do you ever take him up to the mountains or up in Wyoming hunting at all, or you always go to back he, back to Wisconsin? Yeah, <clears throat> we spend most of the time going back. I go back to Wisconsin, but yeah, he's just out here this last week, obviously helping with my little nephew. But uh, mm -hmm. he's out here all the time. Um, we did a little elk hunt two years ago. Cool. Uh, getting him trotting around the mountains a little bit, you know, he's getting up there in age, but he can handle, he works, he works hard to be able to get out here and do those things, uh, which is uh, fun. Um, I've kind of moved into bow hunting more. So that is a little bit of a different a animal. Oh man. I, I highly respect so. it. So, uh, I am not a hunter, but I'm a, uh, a, a Jeep slash hiker slash camper. And, uh, so I'm up there all the time, right? Mm. Up by myself, you know, kind of doing doing my thing to to get away from the noise. <laughs> and so that's a good way to put it. I'm a, I'm a solo camper, solo Jeep kind of camper. And yeah. uh, anyway, I see so so during you know in the fall, obviously, I see I see hunters all the time. So I'm always striking up a conversation with them if I see them on the trail, or I'll I'll pull over at their tents, you know, and have a beer and just chat. Yeah, you know, visit. That's with awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I, well, I hope I come across to you out there. That yeah, sounds right. Like a good time. <laughs> yeah, I always wear my orange too because I don't want to get shot. So even though I'm not yeah. hunting, I wear my colors. <laughs> That's a good idea. Well, hopefully, yeah. if you're out there in the fall, it's just those archery guys. You know, we we got to yeah. get pretty close. Yeah, so. I respect that, man. Have you ever had to pack yeah. out? By the way, have you ever had to like? Mm -hmm. miles? No, no, not yet, <sighs> dude. I mean. I've heard stories like you're packing two, three miles of meat on foot, like back and forth, back and forth. Like that is okay. Yeah. I highly respect those guys. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a challenging process. I, I mean, it's not been, I've been part of it, but not from my arrow and okay. it's uh, a mile and a half does not seem like a lot. If you walk out your front door, <laughs> but when you're in the mountains packing out, 
Ooh. Uh, bunch of weight. Oof. At 10,000 feet? At 10,000 feet? Uh, <laughs> uh, it'll, it, it lets you know, you know, do hard things, right? And right. That, no real doubt. quick, lets you know where you're at. It's no your doubt. level of, of fitness for sure. So speaking of fitness, so you went to school kind of to study, you know, kind of what you're in, which is interesting. So many people don't end up in the field that they went to school for, but uh, I mean, kind of, right? Like you kind of, but uh, were you always into, I mean, were you always super athletic, sports driven? Were you always that guy like way early on high school? Yeah, I think I leaned on it. Um, it was easy for me to be athletic and like outgoing, okay. be active. I was a busy body. Uh, I didn't, okay. I didn't play video games. I was, I was one of the last to say I would go outside and play and throw a ball around or ride my bike, um, at a young age where friends were in playing video games and stuff like that. Now, <laughs> granted, we didn't have the video games back then that there, there are now, you yeah, know, so yeah. it's a whole different story. So who knows what happened, but yeah, I, I leaned on that. I knew it's always been a passion. I've, I've been curious uh, about the body and how, you know, even if I got hurt, um, or if my brother was pounding me into the ground, like, <laughs> was he creating terminal damage? <laughs> you know, I was wondering these things at like five. So I'm like, yeah, I had an interest, you know, it was, I, I was like, I don't think other kids are thinking about this. <laughs> um, did you play all the sports in high school? What did you play? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Football, basketball, primarily. I was a gymnast. I would say the, yeah, you know, for people with young kids, I mean, I was a gymnast for the young years of my life, younger years of my life. And that was, the most foundational thing my parents uh-huh. could have done for me okay. um, taught me to fall taught me, it strengthened my core, my back. Mm. It, 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 it taught me body awareness. It taught me in space. Right. And mm. that translates to all the other sports. And as a coach myself now, you know, when I work with the athletes or anyone for that matter, what you just asked me is a question I asked them. It's like, what other sports, what other things mm. have you done? You know, uh, tell me how athletic you are. Cause I've worked with a lot of professional athletes that are mm. not coordinated. <laughs> right. not. and not limber and then they can't just do all the things yeah I, I got you okay so you were always into that all right so yeah when you went to school then did you know what you wanted to do did you did you know you wanted to be in that field and did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, and and that's how did the question. entrepreneur piece happen yeah go for it that's a great question you know and i one i had to actually think about a little bit and it does take me back a little bit before school Growing up in Madison, Wisconsin is a hotbed for entrepreneurs. Oh, um, I don't okay. know if you I know, didn't know that, that, but I did not know that. A lot of small businesses, uh, a lot of, you know, you got University of Wisconsin there. Um, business okay. school uh, is an amazing one. And there's just a lot of entrepreneurial spirit in that town. Um, and okay. a lot of really good businesses that have come out of that town, okay. um, you know, and thrive. And so you're always hanging around at uh, dinner parties and uh, you're getting these talks and people talking about their businesses, goods and bads and all the struggles and all the, and all the successes. And you can see it. So growing up, I kind of knew that it path for me. Um, it wasn't that I didn't want to work for someone else. Cause I, I actually did want to work for other people earlier on and still hoping to do that today. Um, but I, I saw mm. the respect. I saw the grind. I saw the reward and learned and asked questions at a very young age. So when mm. I went to school, uh, I chose kinesiology with an emphasis with business um, great, great. so I could understand the human body, but also learn how to, you know, I was 19 when I trained my first client, um, uh, 42 now. So I've training quite a lot, quite a while. And, wow. um, you know, I ran a fitness center at the university of Wisconsin, Eau Claire, oh. uh, for my entire, uh, college, <clears throat> uh, time there. Uh, and, Got to learn a lot. I had some good mentors there and had a really good client base. And got to transfer that knowledge right into my ma- my core classes in my major. So much so as towards the end of my college tenure, I was actually instructing the class on personal training. When we got to the personal training and awesome. how to assess and communicate with that client, um, I, I kind of TA'd that course because I had been doing it. So I had a little bit of an up on that side of things. But yeah, but when you but when you graduated, you got a couple of other quote regular jobs, but kept doing kept doing some some private training on the side, and then yeah, and then what? Eventually, I, th- I see that you had Future Fitness <laughs> Training LLC, and so I'm guessing you kind of you were kind of doing that a little bit on the side when you were working those other jobs for a few years. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, and that you know, I never let go of that dream. Uh, I 
when I moved to Colorado, I started in a big box gym, built up a client base, and then I started becoming part of a smaller studio brand, ah. took that over. And then that's then started a new brand on my own with, with actually with another partner of mine called E3 Fitness. I see. Um, and so that it just, it started to ascend, but down here, when I was getting my feet wet in Colorado, I had jobs that had multiple disciplines. I was in real estate. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, running, you know, helping control over you know, roughly $80 million in real estate, mm. um, for an amazing local company, actually in Colorado called infinity home collection, beautiful homes. They do a great job. Um, that was a long time ago, but then also, um, I was in the medical side, uh, where I was, uh, registered orthotic and prosthetic fitter and basically was going around and putting continuous, what they're called continuous passive machines. Um, or medical devices onto. So if you've had a knee injury or a shoulder, okay. it puts you in a machine and passively move your your knee as oh, you rest. I see. So post surgical. Um, so I actually got to understand the medical and health, more health medical side of the world with what I was currently doing with the kinesiology and personal training and everything okay. like that. Boy, which all very much yeah, all this is tying to, together. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. So didn't know that. I will be honest. It's not like there was like, oh, I had it figured uh, out. You know, that's kind of right? the, probably more of the interesting uh, part of the conversation. Have you ever met anybody that said, yeah, I came out of college and I had this plan and it went exactly this way. A, B, C, D, E. It's <sighs> never, it never goes that way. <laughs> no. And, you know, yeah, there's stories that, that about on that, what you just said, but no, I have not. <laughs> I'll yeah. leave it at that. But so you're doing this thing, the E3 Fitness uh, was that that was making money with your fa- co-founder there? You were doing fine there. Yeah, we were doing. You know, we started small and humble, and okay. really built a brand. Um, okay. Did a great job. Um, you know, we the ideology was take this one-on-one environment. You know, you and I doing a personal training session together. Okay, um, we're doing really well. How can we take that environment, do it in a small group setting, decrease your cost, get you to come in more often, and really create impact for more hundreds and two thousands of people rather than just that one-on-one one hour interaction that you were having. Okay. So that was the, that was the design behind that. And yeah, that went really well. And then what um, happened? You, what happened? You, uh, you, you got a tech, did somebody keep telling you, of course, being in Denver and Boulder and all that, it's always about the, the tech play. Did, uh, did you, did you say to yourself, I need a, I need a tech play in this or how, tell mm-hmm. us how Exer health uh, developed, how that, how that all come about. Yeah. Walk us through it. Uh, it's a bit of a story, but it's a good, it's a good one. And okay. I think it's a, it's a learner for people out there that are in high school and college, meeting their friends, going through classes, you know, number one, if you, if, if you spend a lot of time and they're your friends, I'd say, make sure you nurture your friendships. Right. <laughs> so uh, and, and don't burn bridges, <laughs> even if like someone, you know, and, and I say this now at 40, but you know, at 19 or 20, it's a different story. Um, and I, you know, and, and we all do, we make, we all make mistakes, but I was fortunate enough to have a core group of friends growing up that we've still together this day. There's about nine, 10 of us that have been friends since we were 12 to 16 years old. Wonderful. And one of those core friends of mine, uh, his name is Zoff Fett and he was uh, a overachiever in academics in high school. And we, we hung out a lot, our whole group. And he moved on and graduated high school essentially as, as a sophomore and went into the University of Wisconsin okay. um, and started taking, you know, beyond AP classes. He was taking core classes at University of Wisconsin, ended up at Stanford. So mm-hmm. he ended up at Stanford, okay. um, you know, did the amazing, you know, it's, it's a cool story that a lot of people can probably relate to or they know of, but it, you know, it dropped out his sophomore year at Stanford, started his own business. That business did, you know, they did okay, but the the bubble that occurred, and so he sold out, got his investor money back, went back to Stanford, and got his MBA. And okay. I know this podcast is about me, but this, yeah, yeah, it's good. No, no, <laughs> he deserves you. the yeah. accolade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, 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 he was the youngest to, to my, to my knowledge, one of the youngest to ever get an MBA from Stanford because he usually wow. have to go out get some experience, to come back. Pretty and cool. He was able to bypass. So, anyways. He spent 20 years out at the, in the Valley. So in Silicon Valley, where all the tech to your reference, you know, happens. And um, I started doing some advising work for him as one of his, he then moved into venture capital, sorry. But 
I started doing advising work as a train as E3 Fitness here in Colorado, kind of keeping my finger on the pulse about what's happening. Um, I sit on the board with IDEA, um, which is an international association for essentially for um, continuing education, all things wellness and fitness within the industry. Okay. So I kind of had my finger on the pulse. Mm-hmm. His venture capital fund out of Silicon Valley was, you know, I would sit in on some calls as they were looking to invest into their third, their invest their third fund. What was your role uh, there? Anyway, what, what were you advising? Very small. I, mean, I was we're... just essentially listening to pitches. So people coming in, I see. looking for money. I see. And I was listening to, you know, going through the pitch deck, listening, um, hearing what they had, some really good ones. Okay. Um, and essentially then advising on the wellness perspective, did I think, you know, was it a good idea or, or you know, I got you. Pass All right. Or All right. Go Very forward. good. All right. Cool. Yeah. Very yeah. good. So right. I will say they, I don't think they really ever listened to me, but, <laughs> but um, still great experience. Wonderful yeah. experience. And nice. Of- so, and nice of him yeah. to bring you in on that. And, and you know, after all those years of staying in contact and, and being friends, that's cool. Very cool. All right. Yeah. So that, that brings us up. And, and th- then one day he came to me and said, Hey, like, it's obvious, you know what you're talking about. It's obvious. We want, you know, it, we're not really finding what we want. They looked at over probably four or 500 companies. And um, he's like, let's take a road trip and mm-hmm. took him to other international associations, Ursa ideas, club industry and the fitness world. And we started looking for niches and those niches were <clears throat> what brands, what products, what manufacturing ideas, what trends need an upgrade in technology. Okay. And, and that upgrade came in the form of computer vision, machine learning, artificial intelligence. So and he had, he had the fun, he had the fund, you had the expertise. He's like, look, I'm looking for somewhere <clears throat> to put, put this money. Let's figure it out. Yep. yep. Okay. That's how it started. All and, right. All yep. right. And then we, we didn't find anything we wanted. So we, um, I'll bring in my third part, co-founding partner of Exer, Sean Cook, who is a brilliant mind, um, with the mobile device and artificial intelligence within the mobile device, amongst he, many other things. Was he a high school friend too, or a Wisconsin friend? No, no. He was a friend of Zaw's, um, in Silicon Valley okay. who, um, Zaw was, you know, trying to hide him, I think in a closet somewhere so that he wouldn't take another job. He was, you know, first 50 in Twitter, um, did amazing things at Twitter. He's, uh-huh. He can, he's, he's, you know, so we wanted to see if we could put some of this, this, this motion software into an, uh, into a mobile device, okay. if you will, in the early days. So kind of dumb it down, but, you know, could we essentially put, hold the phone up, hold it up and see the human body? Not, you know, and, and actually recognize, you know, these are my eyes, you know, my nose, my ears, shoulders, right versus left. Um, and then from there, could we start to detect different movement patterns, um, mm, mm. exercises? And that technology was not out there in the world yet. Mm-mm. No, no. Wow. wow. I mean, okay. it's just surfacing now as wow. as we as we speak because you, the big differential there would be um, everything we do is run on the edge, so it's on the it's on the phone, and there's no external hardware pieces. There's no dots you put on your body. There's no sleeve that you put on. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that you have to wear. All you need is your phone. Is this the same and type you, of technology for facial recognition, or is that the kind of the same thing, or no? It's it's in the same department. Um, for fa- it's in the same department. I'll put it there. But it's oh. it facial recognition that you can get on your iPhone, obviously. Um, you know, to open your phone and things like that. Different, different, but in the same world for understanding. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then, mm-hmm. and then you guys formulate you somehow you formulate a business model around this to where. Yeah. It can tie you. You got the AI expert, you got the VC friend, and then your expertise on exactly how people are supposed to be doing a push up or, or whatever. Yeah. And you, yeah. <laughs> by the way, when I just let the listeners know, when I was preparing yesterday and this morning for our interview, and I was looking at all your stuff because I do, you know, I, I don't know, 50, 50 push ups a morning or whatever, just as a 55 year old, just to kind of, you know stay in shape and so nice I, I watched your stuff and i'm like okay yeah i gotta make sure i'm doing these push-ups properly <laughs> <laughs> yeah well uh we got we got an app for that <laughs> exactly exactly uh, i know i was like wow okay uh this is cool yeah so anyway but i'm uh, sorry i got off yeah. track all right so you guys formulate this this business so there there wasn't this software did not exist and so um you you put it all together for Matter of fact, now might be a good time. Why don't you just give us the Xer overview as it stands today? Give us the 
give us the elevator pitch. And for the listeners, it is exer.ai. Um, yeah. It's an app, of course, but can you use it on your desktop as well, or it's just strictly for the phone? We have products that you can use for the browser, but right now we're trying to stick uh, okay. strictly to the phone or mobile device. So you could use a, you know, you could use a tablet as well. Okay. Um, we're okay. keeping it there, but we do have products. Extra Studio is one of them. Um, okay. You could dig in deep on that, but that there are products. It's it's much easier in the browser. Let's put it that okay. way. Give us the uh, give us the pitch, Clint. Go for it. So, yeah. So we use artificial map human movement. That's what we're doing. But what does that matter? What solutions are, or what problems are we solving? So right now, what we're currently doing, in the last year and a half, we became a medically registered device with the FDA. Great. Which is huge. huge. Right. So huge you win. download, huge huge you download Exer, and you literally have a registered device on your phone now. Cool. And that's how that works. Now, you, well, you have a registered app, but it's on your device. So that would be the medical device. Okay. And so... The current, the current trajectory for us in PATH is we're working through RTM, remote therapeutic monitoring codes. So those codes are billable codes for major payers, major payers, uh, you know, United Healthcare, the Blues, um, Medicare, th- those all through done through CMS. So <clears throat> you have a shoulder injury, you have to have surgery. So I'm going to dumb this down, but so you shoulder slap, you know, you come home, you have a little bit of a physical post-operative physical therapy script from your orthopedic surgeon. Which happens. You know, this is not no on physical is... therapy yet. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. This is just, Hey, let's get you moving a little bit again. Okay. All right. All right. You can set, you can use your phone. We have a set, we have an exercise of over 200 uh, or a library of over 200 exercises that you could go in. These are personalized to you from your orthopedic surgeon. Mm. They do that through their computer. They send the workout to your phone. Okay. You can get out and do this home exercise program in order to help yourself progress through therapy. And now with that, the the benefit to the patient is sometimes I don't know if I'm doing this right. Oh, totally. We can put air, totally. can put air correction into this. And so if you're doing something wrong, and I can send you a demo um, okay. offline. Definitely. But if you're doing something di- you know that's difficult or wrong or hurts, we can we can identify that. We can flag that for the orthopedic surgeon and send that back to their team in real time. That and does sense? somebody does. So yeah, it sounds great. Is, is the phone talking to me in the middle of my push up saying, Hey, straighten your back up or whatever. Or yeah, I get a, wouldn't that after. be just an awful experience? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, especially if it was my voice. Cause that's what we have in our beta app. Okay. <laughs> no, it, you have the opportunity. We will flag if I'm going to give you, since I stuck with shoulder, if you're doing a shoulder abduction okay. and we're trying to go, but you see how I'm leaning? Well, mm-hmm. you're going to get more range of motion that way, right? So if your body starts to lean, we can see, that, we can actually see that and say, hey, let's straighten back up and try to have less lean as you move the arm up. Okay. And then we can get more of an objective, but a more accurate objective number for the surgeon and the physical therapist. So when they get that data back, we can flag that, hey, the, you know, the patient did three on the second one, they had an excessive body lean. So we can, we can flag those and we can flash things on the screen and we can't, we have the audio to help the patient learn in real time, oh. but we'll also capture that little moment for the patient um, or the, or the user or whomever, because there's different use cases, but we can capture that. So when they go to their progress, they can click on that video and see what they did or what we, we were showing them was what they were doing wrong. So That's they don't great. have to stop. That's and great. Continue to go. Okay. We count that rep. If you're doing push ups and you're on number 49 of 55, I'm not going to stop you if you got some energy left, right? We're going to keep you going. So, um, very see. much from an empathy approach. You okay. know, you don't want to be too harsh on them. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a voice saying, hey, man, you suck. You're not doing that right. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, That'd be cool. It, that's how people think, though. You know, that's it how, is. It you is. Know? It is. By the way, it'd be cool if you could uh, program it to talk to you however you wanted, right? Like if you wanted a hard ass voice like drill sergeant thing <laughs> yeah. or if you wanted like a super sweet nice we'll lady like oh steve really good try yeah like, if you, i want that <laughs> i have an i have an amazing friend you know with the perfect british accent <laughs> and depending on what he says will just make you laugh so and if you're in the totally. doldrums of a workout and you get his voice to be perfect <laughs> so so it's watching you uh there could be some flashes in the moment but it's all it's really good for afterwards you can either watch yourself or you get the report back from your doctor, uh, all, all of all combined, right? So I, I think is what I heard you say. So the 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 end of the pitch is essentially this is this is remote 
correct? And a lot of people that get surgeries in the real world are coming from rural areas. They yeah, don't totally. have access. Yeah. So this helps not just the patient, but it also helps the surgeon. They can, there's this RTM code so they can bill, their department can bill for this information because they're analyzing it and Love they're following it. up on it. So there's five different, well, there's four right now different codes that the, that the orthopedics or the physical therapist can bill through in order to gain a new revenue path in a very much changing uh, medical world insurance world and no that, no doubt and, no doubt and right now the doctors okay right now the app is paid for by insurance companies so so united healthcare and these folks are now paying the doctor or let's see how does that walk me through the the, 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 payers, the funnel the payers, of cash yeah the insurance companies reimburse on those codes so that's all they do they're going to reimburse on all codes so but how those codes are reimbursed is the 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 doctor's office or the pt submit those codes for care I see. Right? So the access that the doctors and physical therapists are now starting to get since pandemic times are these remote therapeutic monitoring codes that they can access to then do some of which they've already been doing. And they can then send those down the line and stack these these codes with other codes that they're already billing for for that patient mm. episode mm. of care. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah. But the, so, the, so but at the end of the day, the person covering the cost of this is the health insurance companies. Back to you. The health insurance company is essentially back back to us. And then the there is a bit of a of a sales process depending on the environment, you know, the environment who it is, whether it's a, a huge medical network, you know, they they'll pay per practice to us or they can do a per patient fee. I see. Depending okay. on the, you know, this is, you know, depending on whether this is an enterprise level or more of a private practice level. And is it by the like, minute, is it by the minutes, by the hour, by the, how are they, how, how does the by building the, work? By the patient, per the patient. No, there's no limit on time, oh, you know, or usage. Okay, you okay. know, we need 30 in order to build these codes on, if we're just talking about insurance stuff, um, you need 30 days. I so see. you need, you need 16 of 30 days of data. Ah, in order to build these codes, right? I see. I see. And, okay. And and so we help that process by creating better adherence, better compliance. Because when a when a so if you're the doctor and you hand me or you you have me download Xer's app and you tell me, hey, listen, like I'm endorsing this. I need you to do these three movements mm -hmm. every day for the next thirty days. Boy, chances right? you're probably of, chances of hundred percent compliance on that are are slim. I would think. Very much so. And so what we in our early data, what we found is when the number one, the MD endorses it or the PT endorses it, okay. right? Okay. And number two, uh, that's how they find out about Xer, essentially. You know, we're not out there soliciting people oh. um, to, to do this at this moment. Okay. Um, we work through um, these channels, through the yes. orthopedic offices, through the physical therapy practices. Yeah. Um, so they endorse it. But the difference that a lot of us haven't had experience with is actually the computer vision side. Mm -hmm. And being able to do things, have it count your reps in real time, have it give you the correct and interstate form feedback, have it re really acknowledge you and say, Hey, great job. You know, you did, you did the three, the three, um, exercises mm -hmm. within your home exercise program today. You had a hundred percent compliance. This data has been sent to your practitioner. And so when you start getting feedback like that and you kind of have this, Oh, you know, Steve's watching me. Yeah. And I, that's where you get about a 66% uptick okay. in compliance and adherence. All right. So that's another value um, to these to, to these surgeons as far as getting patient compliance mm. and a value to the patient. Whereas, you know, the patient understands that this data is essentially coming back to the surgeon um, or the PT office in real time. Very good. What happens if the patient doesn't do it for 30 days and you don't get the data you need? Does the health insurance still cover the cost if they drop out, if the patient drops out? No. Now you got to comply with those codes, right? That's part of the process. Wow. So, so, there's, there's some, so 40%. That's a great question. Oh, so 40% of the people that use it right now, the insurance doesn't end up covering it because the data didn't come back. Not necessarily the 40%. There's a 66% uptick when you're using something oh, like oh, an oh, Axer, oh, oh. right? Oh, okay. So, but All it's right. a great question. It's a great throw out too, because listen, if you know these three movements for the next 30 days and you get going at them real well, Steve, do you necessarily need to go in the app to do it and have it follow you and track you? Ah, uh, I see. Right? Yeah. So hmm. what, what also is built in is what's called PROs. Okay. And that's patient reported outcome. That is pain level, pain score. Hey, how are you feeling today? Mm, mm. Right? You just, as the patient, you check a, you check a box. I'm a, I'm a one to ten on a pain scale. 
you know, my involved side versus my uninvolved side. How, what's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. You send those numbers back. That's data. That still works, right? And okay. then I can look at the app and say, you know, I know the movements today. And actually, quite frankly, in my workout this morning, in my in my meditation this morning, I did my movements. I can go in and skip. I see. I can scroll them out okay. of reps. Good. And I can manually put this information in as a mm, patient. Mm, very good. And then that can still that can still be billable. Okay? Uh, so, it's interesting. That's good. Okay, very good. The reason I asked about the compliance thing was because I had to wear a heart uh what's it called not monitor um i don't know i had to wear i had to wear something for 30 days and, and i had they gave me a phone they gave me a phone and the phone connected mm -hmm. to the device it, they were looking for uh, flutters or, or heartbeat skips or whatever really i'm, nice. I'm, yep. I'm yep. not using the right language but uh anyway they gave me the phone i had to attach to the device and every day i had to make sure the the phone was was reading the device and all this and i was supposed to do it for 30 days 20 days in, I was like, ah, Jesus fucking thing, man. I, I don't know. And then, you know, it just, <laughs> you know, and then it would like disconnect and I couldn't get it to connect right. And oh, it's not charged or this or this. And it's like, ah, and then I just stopped. I just stopped. But the interesting thing is like, like nobody called me. I didn't get like a beep. I didn't get a warning. I didn't get a, Hey man, you, you know, nobody. And then, and then when I was supposed to mail it back, I just mailed it back. Like I was supposed to, nobody ever called me or anything. I was mm. like, okay. I, I don't know. Uh, but I think um, some kind of. Uh, hey, Did Mary, you build for it? Hey, hey, Mary. Yeah. Uh, good question. I don't know. My wife pays the bills. I don't even know if we got billed for that. I bet you did. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I think I think a reminder or a uh, like, hey, put in your stuff, put in your data or, you know, something to keep them going mm -hmm. is critical, isn't it? I would think. It absolutely is. And what you experienced was what is called remote physiological monitoring. Mm. That's used with a piece of hardware medical device exactly mm. like you had. Mm. Um, and that process, I can't speak to it thoroughly of, of, of your individual outcome, but when you don't have the abilities and capabilities that we have to really monitor a patient yeah. and actually kick that data back to, yeah. to the team, mm -hmm. how else are they able to do that? Now, right. if your, your physiological exterior device, external device rather, was kicking information back to your phone, which is undoubtedly going back into a portal into whomever administered this to you. Mm -hmm. They probably just didn't have it within the workflow, which I'll be honest is because of all this newness of the RTM. That is an interesting conversation in itself as I far see. as in incorporating this into workflow. Cause what happens is we get all this beautiful data on this patient. That's actually putting the effort in mm. what you needed is someone to say, Steve, you're doing amazing. The heart's looking great. We're getting yes. the data we need. Yes. I need you to keep going. I needed that. You know? I need. I, de I needed that. Yes, I needed that. If somebody would have done that, I would have kept doing it. Yes. Yep. So and true. that's the coaching perspective mm -hmm. that we kind of can, mm -hmm. you know, can niche in because we, you know, exercise. It's a more than a three-headed monster, but the founders, you know, we have a perspective from each one of those use cases ah, in our in our founding circle. I love it. I, I love it. Is this before? Is this in between, like full-blown physical therapy, where the doctor says you have to go see somebody? or it replaces it or it's in between or it's before where's that at in the, in the timeline there? It's a great question. Um, it's so you're asking if it, it can be a prehab scenario. So a preoperative prehab scenario to get the patient moving into appropriate ranges of motion or, or um, uh, strength um, or even stability of the joint before going into surgery okay. or it, in most cases where we've been playing with this right now and where our partners that we're currently with are using it, um, is in that post-operative process where you really have that patient's attention. They're in that down state post-operatively and they're using Xer for at least 30 to 90 days post-surgery. And does this replace, so do our physical therapists, are they like scared? Are you, are you the enemy? Are they like, Oh, you guys are going to take your jobs away? <laughs> I love this question. I love this question. Uh, this is the question that I get sometimes as we go to raise money, yeah, um, stuff yeah. like that, where you get the intuitive investors yeah. um, that, dig in and yeah. and they want to know more um and i will very much say part of our ethos at, at exer is absolutely not no product that we build is here to replace um mm -hmm. i'm a coach i still am a coach i'll be a coach my whole life i come from this industry True. i come from the more pt side not the ortho That's but right. it 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 
can't, it, it can't, it will always, I think for right now with AI and computer vision, a lot of products that come, that come out, if you look at even some of our competitors, it's about replacing, it's about going strictly B to C. Um, we are trying to enhance this process. There's a lot of help that is needed in the medical world as far as collecting data uh, remotely. Okay. And with this new technology that our cameras have, we're able to simulate in a lot of instances when we're not talking about the transverse plane or rotational right now with a 2d camera we can simulate a lot of what a mocap lab can do which a mocap is motion capture those are when you go into a room that's got eight cameras up on oh. uh, on the okay. wall and okay. you walk in there's force plates and they can literally see every movement how much force you're producing um, um it's mm. a gate lab and mm. We can do, we validate a lot in those labs and those settings. And so there's a lot we can do. And if you can do that, then the patient doesn't have to fly, you know, from out of state to see this particular special surgeon, mm -hmm. um, or they, they can see the PT further down the road. So for physical therapists, where we get this question the most, the thing is extending care. Do you know how many sessions for your insurance, oh. for instance, Steve, yeah. do you know how many PT sessions you get per year? I, like, I don't know, three, I, not very many, right? Not very. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Plus I really don't want to go that often to, to be honest. It, driving well, over that's there. the other thing. And you know, when the PT knows that, right. PTs are incredibly intelligent humans and they know how to get you back upright. Mm. And, but the problem is, is a lot of the times they're not put in a position to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning they have two little sessions with you. Yes. Or the patient's already bumming because it's like, I live 30 miles from you. Totally. But you, my doctor, or, you know, I, you've been referred and I don't really, I want to go somewhere where I trust my referrals. So I'm going to go to you. And then you get there and you probably have a great experience, but you're like, oh man, I got to do that again next week. Yep. And so we can extend that care because the PT can then put a home exercise program into the Exer app, send you home, follow along with your data to make sure you're doing things correctly, but Love also it. you're feeling okay. And then you can extend that care into the more formidable times. So if you're return to sport or your return to work, you're actually getting to the points that actually has specificity involved with real life. Mm. And so that's a use case on both ends for you of, you know, why we're not looking to. Uh, okay. Very good. This, this technology that you've built now, um, this software, boy, couldn't it be used for, I mean, I know you guys, I know what you're using it for right now, but as an investor, I'd be thinking, okay, well, if this thing can track all kinds of body movements and report back what people are doing, but what else could you do with that? You could probably do a lot of things with that, right? I mean, uh, I don't know, c c compliance on uh, movement of uh, employees that are supposed to be moving a certain way. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think about what all you could do with that, but I'm guessing there's there's other things you could do with that software and then you could use it as you could make it a SaaS business and let people white label it or whatever. I don't know. Have, have you had any of those conversations? Yeah. We have an advisory board meeting in, in an hour. If you want to come join. <laughs> no, that, that's awesome. uh, yeah. Um, I, yeah. Would, I would think so. I would think there's all <laughs> kinds of angles here uh, for sure. How much cat can you talk about? I, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Some, some you may not be able to answer. Um, can you share cash raise? Like how much have you raised so far? And are you in a cash raise right now? Um, yeah, so we just are ra wrapping up a, a six and a half million dollar round. Um, is that, is that a seed? Is that series A? What are you calling it? I'm going to call that a seed plus. Okay. Probably a plus plus if you really want to be honest. Okay. <laughs> so we've raised, we're raised right around 10 million thus far. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and this is the biggest chunk that's come in. Um, all original investors came back in on this round, which I think is Good. for people that's that raise money know mm. that that's always a great thing. Um, yeah. they believe in what we're doing and just to speak to that investor question, as far as, you know, there's a lot of use, there is a, there's a ton of use cases. And I think as a learning moment for people that are in startups and raising money and have teams, it's, it's irresponsible to chase every path. Now you might have to chase more than one at a time, mm -hmm. uh, to see what's going to work. And we've been there and we are there, uh, cause there's a lot of areas we'd like to go, but I know that our investors that have invested want to know that we're focused That's and we're great. down and we're not throwing things, you know, still trying to, you know, see what sticks because there's, to your point, there's calls that we field every day on use case, on mm -hmm. integration, on API, APIs, on, um, all that fun stuff. And we'll get there, you know, but right yeah. now we're focused on proving out one, one area, one path. Good job. Nice. And it's a hard one. 
but yeah, yeah. so anyways yeah, that's, yeah, that's great so, yeah, i mean that's, that, that's really that's really good i that, that's great stuff right there clint thanks for sharing that it is easy to uh Oof, you know, d- d- turn left or turn right and get off the path. And then you're over in the forest and there's a bunch of tall trees. And you're like, oh, shit, where am I? What are we doing over here? We got to get back on track. <laughs> you know, it's easy to say it and like understand what you just said. But when you're in it, it's difficult. It is. Saying no is a is a is it a is. very strong asset in the quiver. You yeah, know, no, no doubt. <laughs> you, you got to say no. Uh, do you have a, is this VC or PE or is it angel or friends or a mix? Mix. Mix okay. primarily VC. Okay. Um, we oh. do have a couple P uh, firms that have come on board in the last round. Um, I can't share that quite yet just because we're going to do a presser on that. But um, uh, and then we have some amazing angels that right. uh, sit uh, sit on the table that are um, that are really in alignment with what we're trying to accomplish. Very um, good. Very good. Yeah. Are you are you and your, the other two co-founders? Are you guys? Uh collectively are you still in charge of the cap table or did you have to give up control there on that, on that raise on the cash raise so far? We're still in control. All right. And how about, how about after the 6 million closes? Still in control. Nice. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) That it's a kudos to Zaw. Um, Uh, You know, Zaw's had, you know, 20 years experience in in Silicon Valley with this and we're trying our best to not dilute our, you know, our investors and, you know, do this the right way. And, you know, and, wait for that big a round in order to give up really, you know, get, you know, basically bring in that boss. Right. And yep. have some good alignment. Yeah. It's so good. You know, it's a good tip for the listeners, you know, uh, there, and we could do a whole show on that, right. We could do a whole podcast on, you know, when you, when you take that big a round and all of a sudden you, you give up control of, of the board and the cap table. Uh, it's a, it's a different ball game. I, I've, I've had so many people on the rider flex podcast go through that conversation more often, more often than not, um, they they wish they hadn't give up given up control as soon as they did. Mo- most people will tell me on the podcast, like you know, if I could give any advice, I would say, "Ooh, man, you know, hold on to control a little bit longer, just a little bit longer." <laughs> uh, because you're right. You yes. said the word boss. You said the word boss because that is the reality. I, you know, they can spin. Everybody can spin it all any which way you want to. You can use sugarcoat whatever you want to. Whatever words you want to use, when you give up more than 51%, you are an employee after that, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yep. anyway, I'm glad you guys are still yep. uh, uh, still in control. Is there, are you just having fun building it and raising cash right now? Or have you whiteboarded out like, okay, when we get to here, we, 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 have you targeted revenue and profits to a certain point? Like, here's here's who's going to buy us. I mean, are you having any of those conversations mm-hmm. or, or are you just, you're just having fun building it right now? You know, we've been in R and D for so long um, that we, I would say, we're 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 out of R and D as you know, the second half of this year, and we've really moved into product market fit um, okay. within the medical uh, side of the world, and you know, we're not at that point of having those discussions. Okay. You know, we earlier on we were approached at some different sides of the tech, um, maybe getting you know, filtering that off or licensing it or selling. Um, and just not there. Uh, the ambitions of the three of us, but I, I'd say credit to my other uh, co-founding partners. Um, we're in this for the long haul. This okay. is, we want this to be the one. This is the legacy builder. All we right. all three have different reasons for legacy builder here, right. um, which is cool. Um, you know, mine's to impact millions of people. Uh, I've been impact thousands personally, but I want to. I want to reach millions, and uh, this yeah. is my avenue to do it. And Sean and Zaw are my gateways to helping me do that. And for those two, they've, they've done really well on Silicon Valley individually. Um, and so they want to build something that, you know, that is recognized, I believe mm-hmm. in, in that, in the biggest environment, you know, mm-hmm. and creating and create impact and changes people's lives. And so we all have different reasoning, but it all, we all have a joint alignment too. So that's great. That's um, great. That's not great. talking you, about the exit at all. Okay, very good. Are you able to pay yourself yet? Or you got are you just, you're still having to do clients on the side and you guys aren't taking a salary yet? Or are you actually paying yourself we'll always, a little bit? I will always grind. <laughs> <laughs> um i I still see I still see clients. Um okay. but the difference what Exer has afforded me to do um on a on a small salary. So making making money on both sides of, of my good. passions. Good. Um is it's a it's provided me the opportunity to really lessen my client load 
um, and work with those that, um, you know, really are pursuing it and want it and really have been able to impact some really amazing athletes this year and the last couple of years. That's great. Um, and we've been able to see some of the, the progress in that. And then also, you know, no, some normal people, right? Like I love working with people that are on the edge. You know, I got one of my favorite clients is she's, she's 80 years old and but yeah. And I see her almost weekly and she'll go do a mile and a half on the cross country skis later. Um, are you serious? And <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's just amazing. It's inspiring. So I, yeah. I really, there's a selfish tone there. I, I'm inspired by anyone that I coach. Um, and if they show that level that inspires me, I'm going to give them everything I have. And so that's an energy filler for me, which provides the energy I need in order to, um, put in those long days and weeks at Exer and be a leader for my team there as well. That's great. I remember the first time we, uh, we thought about raising some outside cash for, for Rider Flex, our recruiting firm. We haven't. Mm-hmm. Scott, and I, Scott and I just bootstrapped it ourselves. We never did take on any cash, but we did have a couple of meetings. And I remember one of our advisory board members, great guy, uh, great guy. Uh, he's helped us so much. He said something like, he's like, you know, he said, if you think I'm going to give you cash just so you guys can pay yourselves more, he's like, that's not how this is going to work. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, so, a free slope. To your point of, uh, you know, careful about what you pay yourself while you're in this stage, right? And you're, you're, you're pitching mm-hmm. to investors. You're, you're, you're trying to get investors to write checks. And you, you can't just be like, oh, we're going to use this for payroll. By the way, are you involved in the uh, cash raise conversations? Are you involved? And if you are involved, do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, this, uh, you, you've done this a while. <laughs> this is great. Another great question. <laughs> I, I am involved. Um, you know, you talk about things that make you uncomfortable. Um, that is one of them yeah. that has never been comfortable for me. Um, my first meeting for our first investors, um, I walked into the boardroom in Silicon Valley and I got grilled for about 30 straight minutes. Well, Sean and Zaw were basically stopped at the door because they're already known. <laughs> so they're like, we don't know who this Clint Katie guy is. So I, I just got drilled Ooh. and you know, Ooh. what's your passion? Like, why is this going to work? Why, you know, how, how much do you know about kinesiology and fitness? The whole, the whole thing, wow. you know? And, wow. um, I was like, Oh wow. Okay. I thought I was coming in here to interview you, you know, but yeah, I was like, that's fair. And you know what? I think I did an all right job, but that moment, every time I walked into other, I've had an amazing, I, this is for other people out there is I've been very fortunate to walk down Sand Hill road with my partners and go into some of the top venture capital cool. firms in the world Cool. and walk in those rooms, say hi, shake hands and learn. Very nice. And so I look at all of these moments as a learning moment Absolutely. for me. So I am involved. You don't want me involved when it gets down to like the negotiation and the nitty gritty that's from my other partners. Um, it's not my strength. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm learning and uh, it's a, uh, it's a heck of a process. That's great. Well, yeah. congratulations on uh, what you guys have built so far, by the way, for the listeners, Xer, E X E R dot A I Xer dot A I I'm assuming for, for uh, Android and, and uh, iPhone, all of it, right? iOS only right now. IOS oh, only. oh, okay. Yep. When, when's, yep. when's, when's Android coming out? <clears throat> when I have a big enough partner that makes it worthwhile to jump that way and build my team out that way. Uh, so, when you say partner, what, uh, what, yeah. what, what do you, you mean? Um, uh, what do you mean by that? I, I want to make sure I understand. Uh, so partner to partners is in, you know, it could be a, a deal, you know, that, you know, or we're moving into, you know, really good talks with major health systems. I see. Okay. And, okay. and that, therefore we need to be device agnostic and make sure that uh, we're good across all boards. But right now, and just, you know, when you're doing things like we're doing, sticking to whether you start with Android or not, or you we're on an iOS uh, only because that's, that is where we committed to the technology at the time when we started um, was better for what we're doing in that realm. Okay. And now since we have our own proprietary models um, that we could put, we can put into Android and all that. It's just, as we iterate, as we improve, okay. it's good to just be on this device and the iOS products. And then we'll slide that over. And that okay. makes it sound so easy, but. <laughs> uh, wrapping up here, I got a question for you. So I'm 55. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to. I mean, I'm not going to look like you again, right? Look like those days are over. Uh, but what advice? What advice would you 
give a 55 year old that just wants to, you know, be active and semi healthy. I don't, I don't need to, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a model or anything, but hmm. you know, I want to move around when I'm 80. Uh, what, what should I be doing? What, just give me a couple of tips here. We can share. Like, what would you advise me to do? Like, Hey Steve, look, just every day, just, just do these two or three things. What, what would you say to me? Just, just curious. <clears throat> You get up pretty early, don't you? Yeah. How'd you know? Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you send me an email at five oh eight. Yeah, I'm an early. Yeah, I'm a morning guy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's number one. Is like, yeah, stop telling yourself a narrative that you can't get up early. Okay. Uh, we'll be real here. Like, you know, uh, you know, motivation's great and discipline is all great. Um, you need a routine and you have to be consistent. Mm. That is the number one thing. Mm. And if you consistently get up early. And if you have kids, you got a business, you're tired, you go to bed late, you're not going to get up early. And if you do get up early, just because you're just going to suffer through it, you're not going to be effective. You know, we all get, you know, 1440 in minutes per day, 1440 minutes per day, we start equal and how we use those. And, you know, we got to use them for sleep and recovery, but I'm going to start there. So get up early. Um, and then you, you are you. So, you know, I'm, I'm a nerd. I have, I'm, I have a, a sauna. I have cold plunge. I have, I got, I got this, this is a journal, um, and a read. Um, I'm a fiery emotional thinker. Um, I need to be right with myself before I can be right with others, including mm. my own family. Mm. And so that morning gives me, affords me the ability to sometimes I don't want to read. I don't want to journal. My head's not there. I'm tired. Go work out. I'll go into my garage and I'll rip a workout. And that workout may be 20 minutes on a spin bike. Stop putting expectations on, on yourself in that, in that, in those, in those first couple hours in your morning, ah. you know, start by getting up early and, and then go from there. What's your plan, right? I'm going to journal, I'm going to read, and then I'm going to write down some thoughts. That's a lot. Like, come on. Like, that's like an Instagram ad right there. Like you might to get one to one of those and be good with that True. because you'll probably be fine. And at 55, you know how to navigate. You will. But you've, you're up at five and you're going to do one or two things that helps you get your mind to be aware, accepting. You can listen better. You can mm-hmm. offer advice better. You have clarity. You have focus. You have better health. You, you, your wavelength is better. So, so true. I would start there. You know, yeah. uh, we'll finish with that. I know we're out of time. Um, it is absolutely true. I have four, five, six things that I do every morning. Uh, the pushups being one of them, but just the other stuff, yeah. right? The other things. And if I don't, I find like if I get around, if I get to around eleven a.m. and and I haven't done those same things every day, I just, I just don't, I feel out of sorts. But if I did knock out my routine, man, you know, by nine or ten a.m., I'm like, okay, phew, did did my stuff. Boom, I'm off to the oh. races. It's so true. It's so true. It's such an amazing. It's such an amazing. It is. You know. Uh, feeling, you know, you can, it's almost like you slide yourself out of the way and like that. I'm good. Yes. I'm good. Totally I can, agree. I can go be this to my team or my family, my kids totally, and, so true. and it works. So yeah. Um, Clint, Clint, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story on the Rider Flex podcast. Really appreciate it. And congratulations to you and the co-founders for, for everything you've done so far and, and wish you the best as things move along. Thank you. Honored to be here. So I appreciate your time as well. Thank you.